Hi, I'm Dustin. Welcome to the special episode of Homemade Movies, Epic Explosions. Unlike that one, it was not epic. Roll the montage. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look back at some of our best miniature explosions and fire and sparks and stuff. Now please don't try any of this at home. We take safety precautions. Don't mimic us and burn your house down, but we're going to show you how we do it. In our Iron Man trailer, Tony Stark has a gallery of Iron Man suits that need to explode, so we had to figure out how do we do miniature explosions. Made a bunch of little drawings of little suits and lined them up. It turns out just lighting a little lighter under it and then spraying it with some WD-40 makes a nice little poof. It looks really big and epic on camera, but it's very small little poofs of fire. But when you shoot it at high speed with a fast frame rate and up close, it looks really big and epic. So that's what we do for all of our miniature stuff whenever we need a big explosion. In our homemade Red 2 trailer, there are a few explosions. One of them is an SUV that totally gets flipped on its side. There's a stick that's gonna push the car up and then there's a hole in the ground that the SUV sits on top of. The hole is where we shoot the fire through. Now, I don't know if a car would really flip like that in real life, but that's what happens in the trailer. So that's what we gotta do. So then there's also a car exploding in a parking lot. My patio table kind of looked like gravel. Put some cars, little building, put some weeds in there, looks like a tree. And then we just fire off our little explosion, poof and flip that thing on the side and there you go. Looks like a big massive explosion on camera. In the Fast and Furious scene, there's a shot that goes down into the engine and then you see like a, a little spark and like a fire happens and I just went upside down inside my broiler under the oven and turned it on and when that whole little thing like lights up, you get this cool like row of flames coming out. So it looked really cool. Some of the biggest fireballs that we've done were in our Star Trek Into Darkness trailer where we've got future London being bombed same trick, you know, lighter, WD-40, but we set up a bunch of cardboard buildings. You can see John's arm reaching in the side behind the buildings, but it goes by so fast that you don't usually notice. Next shot was just setting up some pedestrians. I'm moving the camera by really fast, and then we just shoot some fire down on there. It goes by so fast that nothing's even in danger of lighting on fire or anything. It just looks so big on screen, but it's just that little poop fire, and that's it. Spoiler alert, the terrorist turned out to be Sometimes you just need a huge wall of fire. So we use my friend Samantha's fireplace because I don't have a fireplace that works. So anytime we need like just a full solid wall of flames, just go to the fireplace and put something in front of it. In the opening shot of the Lord of the Rings trailer that we did, there's a big fireball that kind of goes along what turns out to be the inside of the ring. We just built a piece of cardboard and wrote the elvish writing on there and then tried to get the fire to sort of go along the side of it. Also, there's one quick shot where Aragorn throws a torch. So we had John throw a fake torch. Then we quickly dissolved to a separate fire element that we shot. Since we shot so many fire elements against the black and they're just straight onto the camera, they've come in handy. And we've already just used it recently in the Ender's Game trailer. We just needed a generic puff of fire, little explosion, nice and centered. So we used that. As you can imagine, there's a lot of fire in Catching Fire. So when we did that trailer, Homemade, there was a lot of miscellaneous fire shots. You just have to look at the trailer shot by shot like usual, see what do we need, what's the safest way to do this, what's the easiest way to do this. There's a really cool shot of a guy with a flamethrower. So you look at the original and try and match the angles of it. It's now shooting towards the camera, so you gotta be careful you don't get too close. Obviously the camera's further away, we're kinda zoomed in. And this is the first time actually that instead of seeing John's hand up in there, we need it to be dark. So we finally got around to like putting black tape over the little WD-40 can and putting his hand in like a black sleeve. So when it pops right up in there against the black background, you just can't see it all. We had a couple of firsts on our Back to the Future scene. It was the first time that we used these sparklers that we found that are made for, I think, birthday cakes. Also, we used sparks with live action for the first time. Usually we're doing fire or things like with miniatures, but this time Doc Brown needed to have some sparks in his hands. In our Die Hard scene, the whole room is supposed to be on fire, but we didn't use any fire in this one. It turns out just putting up some red filters in front of the lights and having somebody kind of flash the lights off and on. It looked really stupid when we were setting it up and when we were like doing this with a box in front of the light. So the whole time you get the sense that there's a big fire really nearby, but when you see the final shot, it looks really cool. And we're like, oh dude, this is probably exactly how they did it in the real movie. Well, thanks for watching this special edition of Homemade Movies Epic Explosions. Check out all the videos that I mentioned on our playlist and subscribe to Cinefix for new ones every single Tuesday. And come back next week for our big Star Wars scene starring Chris Hardwick as Luke Skywalker. You're gonna love it. So we'll see you then.